In this tutorial, I'll explain how to apply the which function in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this tutorial, I will show you several examples and the first of these examples are based on the vector object that we can create with line two of the code. So if you run line two of the code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new vector object appears, which is called X. And we can print this vector object to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line three of the code. And then you can see that our vector contains five integer values, one, five, four, eight, and four. So let's assume that we want to identify the index positions in this vector where the value four appears. Then we can apply the which function as you can see in line five of the code. So within the which function, we need to specify a logical condition. So in this case, we want to search all values in our vector that are equal to the value four. So if you run line five of the code, you can see at the bottom that a vector of two values is returned, the values three and five. And these two values correspond to the index positions in our input vector where the value four occurs. So at the third index position of our input vector, we have the value four. And at the fifth index position of our input vector, we also have the value four. So in this first example, I have explained how to return the index position of one specific value. However, we can also use the which function to search for the index positions of multiple values. So in the second example in line seven of the code, I'm searching for all values that are either equal to four or equal to one. So if you apply line seven of the code, you can see that another output is created, which is showing three values, one, three, and five. And these three values correspond to the index positions in our input vector, where the values are either equal to one or equal to four. So as you can see, the first index position in our input vector is equal to one. And for that reason, this index position is returned as well. Another thing we can do with the which function is that we can count the number of occurrences of certain values in a vector. And we can do that in combination with the length function, as you can see in line nine of the code. So in this line of code, I want to count the number of occurrences of the values four and one in our vector. So if you run line nine of the code, the value three is returned. And this tells us that the values four and one appear three times in our input vector. So in the first examples of this tutorial, I have explained how to apply the which function to a vector object. However, the which function can also be useful when we are dealing with data frame objects. And this is what I want to show you in the next examples. So for this, we first need to create an example data frame, as you can see in lines 11 to 13. So after running these lines of code, a new data frame object is appearing at the top right of our studio, which is called data. And we can print this data frame to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 14 of the code. And then you can see that our data frame contains five rows and three columns, which are called x1, x2, and x3. Now let's assume that we want to create a subset of this data frame, and we want to keep only those rows where the column x1 is larger or equal to three. Then we can apply the code that you can see in line 16. So in this line of code, I'm subsetting our data frame using square brackets. And within the square brackets, I'm applying the which function to a logical condition. And this logical condition specifies that I want to return only those rows where the column x1 is larger or equal to three. So if you run line 16 of the code, you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console that a subset of our data frame is returned. And as you can see, this subset contains only those rows where the column x1 is equal or larger to three. So in the next example, I want to show you how to use the which function to extract certain columns of a data frame. 
And we can do that by using the which function in combination with the call names function and the in operator, as you can see in line 18 of the code. So in this line of code, I'm telling R that I want to extract only those columns that are called either x1 or x3. So if you run line 18 of the code, you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console that another data frame subset is returned. And this time we have excluded the column x2, or in other words, we have kept only the columns x1 and x3. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.